and point the camera towards me. Uh. Let's start, then transition. Okay? Start, start all right. <laughs> okay, hi everyone. We'll, let's, let's get started. Sorry, uh, apologies for the delay. Uh, so, today we are going to go through we are going to go through a, work, a series of workshops. Uh, it will be on every week and Saturday, just like today. Uh, we will be moving towards paperless, paperless writing so that it won't be that slow next week. Yeah. So, so let me just go through quickly uh, what we are going to learn today. So we are going to learn basically HTML and CSS today. So uh, feel free to ask any questions anytime throughout the entire workshop and yeah okay so just some housekeeping we haven't set up the Wi-Fi yet there will be food later on at around 12 o'clock which is very soon uh, no food or flavored drinks within the lecture theater itself yeah and so a little bit about myself my name is Hui Ren uh, so raise your hand who, who, here, who here uses Twitter Twitter anyone Okay, uh, one hand. Uh, if you're not on Twitter, it's time to get on Twitter. What about email? Anyone uses email? Okay, more hands, right? So you can reach me via uh, Twitter or email as well. And I'm an open source advocate, and I generally uh, evangelize about open source, open management, open leadership, right? Okay, so I participate in competitions, and uh, I'm also an open organization ambassador. So I evangelize about uh, one of Brit has in a uh, book called The Open Organization, where Jim Jim Whitehurst, the CEO of Red Hat, written this book. It's very inspirational, and do check it out if you want to learn more about uh, what is open source, right? And I go for conferences and help out at conferences. You can see I'm wearing some DVDs on my body, and also I'm involved in the Singapore tech community. So. If you all didn't know, we have a very vibrant community within Singapore that is doing tech and there are many many people uh, who are very experienced and passionate about what they do in the field of IT. Right? You can see uh, engineers as you, we, are also, we record meetups as well. And I also speak at conferences. So the last conference that I went for was the PHP Con, which was just a few days ago. And I spoke, I had a 15 minutes lightning talk. So yeah, so what is the purpose of this workshop today, right? And well, it's to inspire learning of technology. Okay, so in Singapore, we, you know, right now we are moving towards uh, more tech and tech. Well, you know, tech is everywhere, right? So we, the main purpose of this workshop is to inspire all of you to learn more about tech, right? And it's to, the workshop itself is to give back to all of you here who are here to learn grow the SG uh, tech community and of course learn more about the web technologies itself right and of course we want to have more great developers within Singapore so I think all of you here who are already here will be great material for Singapore's future right so uh, that what well, uh, there is no free lunch so that uh, I mean well the lunch is free but you know uh, that, that what, what, what do I mean by this is that uh, that's something that I hope you guys would do as well in exchange for learning and all the food that we give to you, right? So I we hope that you can learn and practice on your own and with others as well, right? So look to your left, look to your right. There's people around you. Then yeah, so talk to them, uh, say hi or something, and learn from each other, right? Of course, uh, I hope all of you will attend meetups and conferences as well. Maybe not now or perhaps in the future. Of course, share your knowledge with everyone and anyone you know, right? So, uh, the culture here in Singapore is a bit different from the Western culture. We don't usually, we sh even if we share knowledge, we don't usually share all of our knowledge, right? So, I hope that all of you will share your knowledge very openly with one another, alright? And, of course, finally, hopefully one day, you guys and you girls will give talks at meetups and conferences, yay! and of course contribute to free and open source software. So you might be thinking about why should I be even attending this workshop right now, right? There's, there's lots of materials online where you can learn more about web and HTML, CSS, and there's plenty of resources. So why should you be even attending this workshop, right? Well, it's to meet people. There's people around you and really just 
talk to them. If you learn online, you can't, you can't talk to people beside you because there's probably no one beside you. And real, there's uh, mentoring in real life, so you get to speak with people. Yeah, it's a really people workshop, and it's we're gonna go through in depth, and it's not just it's not just code, right? So you learn about the fun, the fun side of programming, the theoretical side of programming, and of course the code itself, right? So I'll be quickly going through four essential concepts that all of you will uh, should remember, even if you don't remember any of the codes. Okay, four essential concepts, right? Uh, first thing, the first concept is to collaborate, right? So, in a room right here, we have, I know, more than 50 people. Even if, even if I'm the smartest here, with all of you combined down there, you will be still smarter than me. So, collaboration is about combining your thinking abilities and working together with each other and making up a new solution, right? So, collaboration is something that is really important in terms of uh, any kind of any kind of technology, right? And of course, ask questions. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the workshop, please, please, please raise your question. Yes. Oh, uh, um, you we don't need you don't need wireless for now. We'll we'll set up the wireless. We are setting up the wireless right now, and we'll give you the login. All right. Okay. Thanks for the question. Any other questions? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, the third concept is to keep practicing. So you know, if you if you swim, if you start swimming on day one, and then if you don't keep practicing, you would not become Michael Phelps or Joseph Schooling, right? So you need to keep practicing, and one day you might become Joseph Schooling, right? So if you keep practicing code, one day you become I don't know the next Mark Zuckerberg or I what whatsoever, right? And the final and most important thing that uh, the concept that you need to remember is the 15 minutes rule. So what is this 15 minutes rule thing? And have anyone heard of this rule before? Anyone? Okay, great. So this 15 minutes rule is essentially about how to ask for help. Before, so if you encounter an issue with your code or whatsoever, and you, you need help, right? So for the first 15 minutes, search up the answer, try to look for what is the problem and use Google, use DuckDuckGo, use Bing or use Yahoo or what, whatever you want to use, right? For the first 15 minutes, try to solve the problem yourself. And if after 15 minutes you still can't solve the problem, then ask for help. There's people beside you, ask them for help or raise your hand or ask, right? So what's the point of this 15 minutes rule is that it helps train your ability to solve problems as well as, you know, you don't want to waste your friend's time, you don't want to waste other people's time. And if it passes 15 minutes, you'll be wasting your own time because you can't find out a solution already. So these are the four essential concepts that you just need to remember and you go very far. Right. So a uh, very quick overview of what we'll be going through today. Uh, what is web, what is programming, and an hour of code, HTML and CSS. So yeah, uh, so anyone know what is the web? Anyone? Mm, okay, so well we started off with what we call the ARPANET. Anyone heard of the ARPANET before? And internet, right? Uh, you might be thinking why am I even going through what is the web thing? But uh, as the basic history of the internet itself is very important for you to understand how you should code something and why you should do it this way, why you should do it that way, right? So we started off with ARPANET in the US. So United States of America started off with the internet. So they were one of the most advanced country at that time, but not so advanced right now because their internet is slow more than Singapore as well. Yeah. So yeah, we basically started off with ARPANET, which was only in, in the United States, and then we moved on towards the internet. and. We had like Internet Engineering Task Force, which is the open standards group that set up several open standards that help enable the internet today, how routers communicate with each other, and etc. etc. We don't go into details, but you know, uh, the internet itself is a very open and it's based on open standards, right? Yeah. And well, essential concepts of the web itself is that it's very open, 
and as, as a, accessible to anyone. So anyone, uh, be it in Europe, be it in US, be it in Singapore, be it in Malaysia, all of you will be accessing the same internet that other people will be accessing, right? And it's uh, built on concept of fast. Okay, it needs to be fast, right? So when it, when I talk about fast, it means that your code needs to be fast as well, right? Don't 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 do uh, all sorts of things that would slow down your code, right? And so that's the three essential concepts of the web itself. And uh, do we go for lunch now? <laughs> okay, so the pizzas are not here yet. Uh, so you want to go to our our code is one hour. Eh? No, our code no. Okay. Okay, so we'll be doing an hour of code right now, but that hour of code is only just 15 minutes. So it's uh, one quarter of an hour of code. Okay, so where is my mouse? So this this company have you heard of this company called Microsoft? Is it Microsoft or Microsoft? Oh, oh this this company called this small company called Microsoft. They they did this thing called a uh, hour of code thing where uh, uh yeah it's it's to basically pro promote people to learn how to program, right? So if you search hour of code, you will see this thing called a uh, code dot org, right? Or uh, yeah, then you click on this thing. Wait, uh, yeah, you need to connect the internet. Okay, so all right. Um, so I have just set up the internet. Um, the ID is Ninja two point four gigahertz and five gigahertz. So you can connect to either one. The password is password. That's a fantastic password. How do you think of that? <laughs> okay, so everyone connected to the internet yet? Yeah. Password is. Password is password. 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Ninja. Wow, sounds very cheap and sounds very fast. But does it work? Yeah, it works. It works. Okay, so uh, everyone connected to the internet yet? Uh, silence means consent. So uh, can can you see uh, the what what is what I'm showing on the screen? I think you can, right? So now let's let's just go through this fifteen minutes of an hour of code, right? So uh, very quickly, let's visit this website. We are gonna play Minecraft. Minecraft. You all heard of Minecraft before? Minecraft. Minecraft fans. No, no Minecraft fans. What is this place? So yeah, an hour of code. So you can see this thing here. Uh, this blocks of people. They are like, uh, I don't know what are they, but they look like blocks of people. Minecraft, Min Minecraft, right? Yeah. yeah. So just click on that and it will open up something called a uh, hour of code with a sheet here, okay? It's a, yeah, it's a sheet. And you press try now, okay? Simple, right? So let's just go through a very, very, very basic of and uh, don't play this video. I don't like this guy talking. <laughs> okay, so you can choose between Steve and Alex. Wait, there's no female character. Hi. Hey. Uh, so I'll, I'll choose Steve because he's just as handsome as I am. And okay, so there'll be some puzzles that you have to try to solve. And it's okay. You just have to play. You don't have to. Okay, look look how uh, it's gonna give you very very simple instructions that any any layman could understand. So it's when you first say hit run to try your program, right? Then you hit run. Okay, you see this small guy move. Okay, this thing is okay. So there's there's this blocks here. You can see these blocks. Okay, so it's it's like Minecraft but blocks as well, and you can drag stuff in, right? It's cool. It's so cool. You can drag, yeah. And why, why, why are we even teaching you this, this playing of this um, box thing? It's, it's just to uh, give you a fun time trying to play a game, right? While programming at the same time. Cool, right? 
Okay, so let's let's try to move this uh, Steve to the ship. Okay, so let's put in uh, move forward. So there's this this command called when run. When when run, what what does any anyone of you know what when run means? Anyone? Okay, so uh, when run is a initializing call. So what what initializing means is that when the program runs, then you do the following things, right? So this is how computers work. You give it a function there, and then when it, when the program runs, it runs through this set of instructions. Okay, these instructions are the instructions we give it here. So you are now the master of the computer, and the computer is your slave. Give the give your slave some orders, and you obey your order, right? So now I I put in two orders to move forward, and if they don't move forward, they'll be trapped and sent to jail or something. So let's press reset, right? And then we press run. Okay, so so what happens? Oh, and it says, wow, you wrote two lines of code just by dragging a block of code over. So yeah, it's something cool, right? So you just learn the concept of programming already. It's about giving instructions, right? And your computer is your slave. That's it. And you're the master. Right. So let's let's uh let's continue on. So now now you have, now that you have achieved a new stage of uh being able to give commands, let's do even more commands, right? So now I want you to a uh, very important resource. Yeah, so this guy Steve, he doesn't know how to chop. He doesn't know how to do anything. So you need to teach him how to chop. Right, so there's a uh there's a tree here. Can can you guys see the tree? Yeah, I, I can see the tree. Uh then you need to move it forward to chop the tree, right? So how many blocks are there? One, two, around two, right, I think. How many blocks are there? Wow, this 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 is so silent. Okay, let's let's try two, right? And let's try running. Alright, where's where's the run? Oh, there it is. What am I cooking? Oh yay! He's he just destroyed the tree and he just uh, polluted the environment. Right. So now you have wrote all of three lines of code. Wow. So now now you have you have learned two very basic commands, which is to move forward and chop trees. So you see, there's different set of instructions you can give to a computer, right? And it'll interpret it and understand what it's trying to, what, what you want to do with it. And then it'll just do whatever it wants to do, which is what you want it to do, right? So it's, computers are like, uh, they are, in this sense, it's a dumb machine, right? You just give it, you just give it codes and it runs. So uh, what, we are, what we have to, throughout this workshop itself, we'll be writing codes to feed the machine and then the machine will read the code and then it comes up whatever you want you want it to tell it to do. Right? Simple. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna does anyone have any questions so far? All good. Understand? What is programming? Yeah, is it is it too simple for all of you? <laughs> I, I hear some laughter, it sounds like it's too simple. Uh, I, are the pizzas here yet? Okay, so we'll, we'll just play until we, <coughs> we get the food, right? So yeah, no worries. Though. It's so let's let's try this third puzzle. Uh, ship sharing, ship sharing time. Use the share command to gather wool from the both of the ship. Oh, it's getting boring already. So now it's it's becoming more challenging. You got two ships, right? So you have to. Uh, there's one block here, one block here. Oh crap! We need to move, right? Okay, so when we move one block, we we cut. Okay, we cut the ship, right? So how? And then we. Do you know which direction he has to turn to? Turn left or turn right? Turn right. Great. Thank you. Uh, I can't. I can't really see. Uh, yeah, and we cut. Oh, it's, it's wrong. He just basically cut air. Okay. 
Okay, let's let's try running again, right? It's very hot. Oh, the ship is uh has no more hair. And as you can see, I'm while I'm programming this code, I'm actually sweating. This shows how intense it is, right? I'm really sweating right now. Wow. Okay, so now we have written six lines of powerful code that can cut ships, right? So simple, right? Let's let's try. Is there something harder, right? Uh, wow. Cut down three trees. Uh, cut down three trees. Three trees. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what what is it doing now? Oh, okay. There's three trees, right? We need to cut down this. This is very hot. Move, for, move forward, move forward. Uh. So now I, I um, so what we in programming itself, you usually want to check if the code works, right? If it what is um, other than it's important to know the theory itself, and it's also important to be practical, right? And of course, test test your code. So in uh nowadays, uh people complain that uh programmers are just uh trial and erroring every single line of code. So. What 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 programmers do is they trial and error, and then they don't know the theories and the concepts behind programming itself. So uh, try to not trial and error first. Uh, try to think out the think the solution out, and then try it. Okay, if the solution doesn't work, figure out why it didn't work. Right. So let's try run this code and see if it works. Okay. Uh, I got the move move. Okay. So. As you can see, we move until I, uh, and he's very sad or something. So, uh, can anyone tell me what's wrong with this code? Anyone knows what's wrong? No one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Never mind. So we are stuck here, right? So, uh, we we need more commands to ask it to move here and there. Turn left, move forward, and move forward, and destroy the block. Okay, so he, what the heck? So he, he, he went to cut tree. I, Am I at the right block? Can you? Am I at the right block? Yes, no? No? no. I, I can't see anything. It's, it's, it's too small. Right, so uh, let's, let's. Okay. Quite simple, right? So, like, you have a slave that. Uh, you program a slave that helps you do whatever you need to do, which is to. Forest and burn trees, right? Um, that's why there's a haze. I don't know why, maybe that's why there's a haze also. Huh. Huh. Right. There's food ready there. No, still. Waiting over there. Okay, so you have this girl talking down here who says something that I don't really care. So now, uh, there, are, there are more concepts to just, to just issuing. Uh, just simple basic instructions that any layman can understand. So now we have this repeat thing. What is this repeat thing? You know what is repeat, right? Everyone here knows what is repeat. Yeah, so what repeat does is it repeats what you want it to do. Sounds simple, right? Yeah, very simple. So I don't know what it wanted me to do here. Uh, it wanted me to play some block, block right? So can anyone knows how many times what what will happen when I run the code? Yeah, correct. 
Yeah, yeah that's correct. It'll, it'll place four blocks there. Uh, let's see. It'll place four blocks here. I, I don't know how it's gonna place since I didn't move it. So it's gonna like bump, bump, bump. Uh, bad job. Okay. So we we need to move it forward, right? So we place. Do we place first or do we move forward first? Place first. Oh, this is this is very silent. Okay. So, okay. Wow. So now instead of writing four times eight lines, uh, four times two lines of code, which is eight lines of code, eight lines of code, you now write three lines of code. Sim simple, right? Yeah, I think it's really simple. So that was a repeat, which uh, in programming terms, there's, there's this thing called loop, and uh, we'll be going through more in depth to the loop itself on the third, third session. Okay, so uh, that was pretty easy, right? I feel like I'm just talking to to, a, to myself or something. <laughs> so, uh, wow, there's actually a difficulty choosing thing here: easy, medium, hard. So, which one should we choose? Are you guys? I, I think all of you out here are experts, right? Uh, wow, you're all done already. I've uh, done every single one of it. Uh. Cool. It's just very fast. I'm I'm not that expert. Uh. So let's let's try. Try. What is this? Oh, it's building for me already. Ah. Right? Uh, do you feel? Does any of you here feel very hot? No? Okay. So... Repeat. My hand hurts. Place blocks, move forward. Okay. Serious or what? What do you mean? Huh? Okay, so I, I, I didn't build the house just yet. And this is really very hot. Turn, 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 turn. Turn right. Turn right. Is it right? Okay, so uh, I think it's it's kind of getting boring from playing this 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 game. It's and I'm sweating in it when I'm playing. So let's 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 just forget about the game for now and go through some really simple. Let's let's really just get started in for a bit, right? So after we have done hour of code for ten minutes, which feel which felt like ten years. Uh, let's let's move on to something else, right? So, uh, let's move on to what actually HTML is. Does anyone know what is HTML? HTML, no. Okay, it's a hypertext markup language. So what it is is a markup language. It's not a programming language. Yay! Can anyone? Does anyone know why it's not a programming language? No, no. Sorry. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, close, but not close enough. Okay. Uh, why it's not a programming language is because it's not Turing complete. Turing complete. So there's this very very famous guy named Tur Turing, right? He he did this thing called the Turing machine, and what this Turing machine does is that it reads numbers zero and one. Yes. Imagination game at the Yep, yep, yep. So uh yeah, so this uh Turing machine, right? Uh it's supposed to read an infinite line of zeros and ones, which are binaries. Binaries, zeros and ones. So as long as a programming language can do that, it's a programming language, right? 
So HTML can't do that. So it's not a programming language, right? And it's a decorative type of programming. So what, what, what do I mean by decorative, right? So when you just write something, when you, you, you just tell it to do something, you just say like, oh, bring me to Marina Bay Sands, right? Then it will just bring you there. So that's decorative, right? So you don't need to say, oh, turn left, turn right, uh, go straight 10 meters, turn left, turn right. That's more imperative, whereas decorative is where you just say something, you just give it a, just like, oh, go Marina Bay Sands, and it will bring you there, right? So that's what HTML is, okay? so. It's decorative, right? So let's just briefly go through what the structure of HTML is, right? Uh, have you all opened up the, have you all registered a code anywhere account? Yes, yes, yes great. Okay, good. Um, so let's go through the, let's just go through the structure briefly first. And uh, okay, so in HTML itself, you need to declare a document, uh, the document type because the computer doesn't know what, what type of uh, HTML version it is. So HTML has several versions and there are also different types of H uh, the version itself, right? So this is a uh, declaration for HTML5. We write open uh, angular bracket. This is an angular bracket here. Exclamation mark dot type space HTML close angular bracket. Simple, right? Simple. Right, so you have declared the document. Wow, well done. Okay, so uh, so uh, you don't type anything yet. We'll, we'll go through the typing later on, no worries. So you have the head as well. So in the document itself, it has structures, right? So in life, you've got structures that govern the country and govern your life as well, right? Unless you have an unstructured life. So, uh, so same goes for HTML. It needs to have structure to govern itself, right? So it needs to have this head here, which uh, which wouldn't really be displayed in the content. We will go through why what what is being displayed in the content itself, right? So and there's also a body, right? So uh, humans have a head and a body, um, and legs as well. Yeah. So for HTML, it's very similar. They have a document type declaration followed by a head and a body. So how do we add content? Wow, simple. The body, you just write con you just write this con write words, whatever you want to write into the body and you got it. Wow. So um let's just get into the code itself, right? Very simple. So now we are in this uh I literally cannot see what I'm typing, so I'm I'll have to try to see what I'm typing. So now that you have a, uh, how do I log? Okay, so I log in. Please let me log in. Okay, so, uh, okay, let me log in. So, this page I don't care. So right now we are, we are logging into this uh, code anyway thing, and I'm gonna enlarge it. I can't see. Okay, let's enlarge it. Can you see from behind? A everyone can see from behind. Good, good. Okay. Uh, if you can't see, uh, move forward because there are still spaces in front, right? I don't know why people like to sit behind, but okay. Right, so uh, let's just, what, what do you want to call this project, right? We've we got this amazing shop that we want to set up, right? We have this really, really amazing shop that we want to show the entire world. This might be just Carousel 3.9 or something, right? So we're going to create the next generation of e-commerce store and we want it to be great, right? So. Let's give it a very fantastic name. Why not uh, John Cena, right? Uh, John Cena Project. So when uh, every one of you are at this page yet? Yeah. Everyone here at this page? Good, good. Okay, all good. So we've got this John Cena Project and uh, there's, there's plenty of things down here which, what just happened? Okay, never mind. Uh, if you happen to do that, which was what I did, uh, you, just, you can just click New Project. And press OK. And 
Okay, so you have this connection wizard here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so uh, let's just search for this thing called PHP. All right. Uh, wow. All right, there's a slider down here, which uh, is is quite dark. I I can't I can't see anything. And let's just run this thing here. Can you see this? No, uh, we're not going to go through PHP 7. We're just going to go through this. Okay, uh, PHP is not for this lesson. We'll be going through HTML and CSS first. But uh, just look for this thing here. PHP development stack with Apache, PHP, MySQL, PHP, MyAdmin, My Composer, pre-installed, SanOS 6.5. Uh, SanOS is a type of uh, Linux distribution, so just just choose that, okay? Okay, everyone, uh, choose that. Do I really have to type in this again? And uh, don't oh, this thing is really getting on my nerves. Okay, so. <coughs> The third time I'm here already. <laughs> okay, uh, I have to make it smaller because the interface sucks. Okay, everyone done? Press create and it'll tell you to wait. Right, so it'll create a container. Uh, do you all know what is a container? Yeah, we are a Singapore is a maritime country with tons of containers in the docking area as well. So we are gonna create one as well, but in code. Right. Amazing, right? We actually we actually now own a ship land yard or something. Yeah, so we are gonna create a container here and it's gonna say deploying the container. Okay, so any of you here are hungry? Nobody here is hungry? Everybody. Hungry? Okay, so uh, now it's time for lunch. Uh, you can go outside and have lunch. There are some pizzas outside, so help yourself with the lunch. Um, any vegetarians here? Um, vegetarians? No vegetarians. Uh, anybody cannot eat beef. Okay, um, don't worry, all the food is halal. So um, there is um, a pepperoni pizza. So, hi guy, you, yeah. Don't eat a pepperoni pizza. <laughs> All right. Okay. Nice. Okay, good to go. Okay. Right. Empty students. The food are at the end, at the piano side there. So you can lead those who are not from NT over that side. Okay. Yes. Everyone not hungry. I mean. Okay. Uh, yeah. We'll continue on later on, right? Uh, stop. Uh, yeah, stop recording. Thank you. So yeah, welcome back from lunch. Yay! Yay, right? Yay, thanks for the support. Okay, so uh, we've opened up this code anywhere thing here, as you can see. Uh, deploy PHP, right? Pre. Oh, this is. It's still very hot right here, right? Okay? Uh, weather is very hot. I really hate this thing. Okay, no worries. So, have all, all the projects have been deployed already, right? All good. Good. Okay. No. No issues. Internet issues. Internet. Internet issues. Internet issues. Who's having internet issues? One, two. Three. Oh, a lot of people having internet issues. <coughs> What issue are you guys facing? No internet? It's not connect. Actually, the ninja doesn't work, but the uh, NT wireless actually works. Okay, okay. Huh? okay so uh, while he. Oh, okay. Okay, I see it. I see it. What? Stupid. Blue's cable. 
Okay. Um. Okay. So, for those who are not having internet, you just have your audit. Um. Try again. Internet should be up. Anybody having internet issues now? Oh, good. Okay. Uh. All right. So, you have now created a really brilliant John Cena container here, right? So. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's take a zoom in here, right? Let's zoom in right into uh, 150%, right? Uh, we can see there's this thing here, oh, John Cena container, party, blah, blah, blah. You want to look at this very important URL here. Can you can all see this URL here? There's a HTTPS and a HTTP, right? Uh, does anyone here know what's the difference between HTTP and HTTPS? Uh, raise your hand, raise your hand. Yes. What's the... Secure connection. Right, that's great. Okay, so uh, we do have shirts to give out to you all. Uh, we'll, we'll, pass, we'll pass you one later, all right? Okay, so, yeah, so if you do answer questions that I ask you, you get uh, gifts from us, right? All right, so there's uh, two important URL here. So. We want to try to use the HTTPS here. So click on this and it should open up some blank page that says, oh, it's Apache running. Do you see this page? All of you are on the same page as here? Everyone here see this page? All good? Good. Yes, no? Yes, no? Good. So uh, just remember, when, when you launch the container, you'll see this bunch of URLs here. So, just make sure you can see this thing here, right? All right. So let's uh, let's let's enough of the talking, right? So we want to get into really writing the code itself, right? Uh, let's start off with just writing some code here, right? There's a there's a when you right click John Cena, you can see there's a create file. Right, let's let's create a file name called index.html and see what happens. So ah you can see there's a file here that's being opened up and when you refresh it gives you a blank page because you have no code. Of course it will give it will give you a blank page. So the uh, we we went through the document declaration, right? So uh, document doc oh this is let me just pinch this up. I, I, can Sorry, how open is next? Oh, okay, so uh, have you right click and created a new, right click, create new file? Do you see a create file here? Yeah, so when you create file uh, index.html, can this thing be click one? Okay, so uh, my, my friend here will help me try to find a clipper for me to clip so I don't have to type with a single hand. As you can see right now, I'm trying to type code with a single hand and it doesn't work out very well because I'm using one hand. Right, so we're going to declare the document type here. You can see document type is DML. And then we type in HTML, right? So, uh, so the document structure you can see here. And at the bottom here, you can see the spaces. You know, can you see the spaces at the bottom here? Switch that to four spaces, okay? Four spaces. Okay, so a single tab will become four spaces, okay? Just keep in mind that. So we have declared the document type, we have declared the HTML, and let's declare the body, right? Uh, head and body, okay? All good. Alright, so let's just declare the head and declare the body. Oh, the color, right. So, let's see if we can change the color. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
whatever container, then scroll below, then you see there's a URL here, then you can click on. Are you, are you able to see the page? Yeah. <laughs> All on the same page. Good. I assume that's all right for now. Uh, okay, so now we've got a brilliant page, but not a brilliant title. Right? This thing is what we call the title. We're not change the title. Let's change. Uh, anyone want to give some suggestion? Title. Uh, how about how about you, gentlemen in front? What title should we give it? John Cena. John Cena. Okay, perfect. Perfect. I like that too. So let's give it a John Cena title. So refresh the page, control S, say, wow, look at this thing on top here. Can you see it? It's right up here, saying John Cena, just which is exactly the text we put in. So we've got one, we've learned two elements so far, H1 and title, H40, HTML, documentation. Uh, okay, so, yeah, your ears are fine, right? Okay, so now we've got we've got plenty of elements already, right? So everyone all good with all the elements that we manipulated so far. All good, right? Fantastic. I knew all of you are here are really good at doing this. So um, other than the title, right? We need to add things. We need to spice up some things, right? So uh, in HTML itself, when let's say I enter characters like this. How do they know it's characters? Right. How would how would a browser read characters like this? This sounds very cheap, right? Right. Uh, but no issues. We we just need to declare what is the uh, doc words that we are the characters that we are presenting, right? Because there's plenty of characters out there. There's Japanese words. There's Chinese words. There's I don't know what kind of words, but there's really really different kind of characters out there. And we need the browser to be able to understand that, hey, this is a this is a type of character set within this blah blah blah. So uh, there's a character set called UTF-8, uh, uh, which comprises of different kind of Chinese characters and different kind of characters in general. So we want to tell the browser that, hey, uh, we are going to present to you characters, English characters, okay? So. We, we're going to learn another tag here called another element, the meta element, right? So meta, so it's M-E-T-A, character set equals U-T-F-A, right? Then uh, we just close it like that. So have you all seen any a bit difference here? Okay, so uh, any, anyone spot any difference here? Anyone raise your hand? We've got prices to keep out. Anyone saw any difference? What's so special about this? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> different? <laughs> the, oh, uh, other than the color, of course. <laughs> yes? Yes, exactly. The slash is the slash is not there. Right, so uh, we'll I'll pass we'll pass you the game later on. So you can see that this one this is a very special element here. It's the special one. It's the one in the ten thousand. I don't know how many thousand. He's the special one that we all want, right? Uh, he doesn't need a slash. He's that special kid there. And uh, so we want to save. And uh, once it's done, you won't see much of a difference here. You you won't see any difference. But when the browser Reads it, it reads differently, right? So let's take a look at how the browser will read it. Okay? So you can see it's already declared here, down here. Can everyone see? Oh, this is awfully small, right? Ah, it doesn't work that way. Okay, so anyway, you can see that it's included. The browser will be able to read it and it'll know that, hey, this is a UTF 8. We are going to present UTF 8 characters within this file. Okay? So now that the browser knows what we are doing here, what we are typing here, what information we are giving to the browser, we can actually do some stuff, right? Uh, so let's see. Okay, so let's 
let's move on to a more expert task, right? Because at the end of the day, uh, uh, we don't really okay. Let's 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 move on to uh, some a new new attribute first, okay? Uh, so there's another attribute that I want to introduce to you, all of you here is the paragraph attribute, and as you can see here, it opens with p, closes with p as well. So let's put this they can't see me text here, okay? All good. Okay, so notice this thing here, okay? So the spacing is around here, okay? And let's refresh the page a little bit, right? Uh, so now it's on a, it's on a new par paragraph, right? And let's, let's, let's look at what would the difference even, right? So if I was to print, if I was to type, they can't see me, they can't see me, on a new paragraph like that, what do you think will appear? Any guesses? Would it appear on a new line? Would it be on the same line? Would it be on 5,000 lines away? Guesses? Anyone? One below. Sorry? One below. Oh, okay. Same line. Good track, good track. Okay, ah, yeah, same line, yes. You already have a, okay, so I, I, I can't give you a hint. So, uh, it will appear like this, right? Let's see what happens, okay? So, it will appear on the same line. You see, they can't see me, they can't see me. But as, for, as the paragraph, the paragraph, it appears on a new paragraph. Wow, have we discovered something new? Right. Are we the next Albert Einstein? Okay, so uh, as you can see, this is how HTML renders the document, right? Even if you place it on a new line, it doesn't care. It will not care at all, right? It will just place it there. Okay? It will, as you can see, there's some space in front. It will render whatever space is in front, and then put it as a single space. So, our indentation had four spaces, but it only became one space here. Can you see it? There's only one space left. What happened to the four spaces? It just disappeared. So, um, for him, that's how HTML works. And yeah, everyone clear? Good. Excellent. So now we understood that paragraphs matter, spaces matters, and we need to know what is HTML. So let's let's try some uh, real fun stuff. Okay. So within the element itself, we have what we call attributes. Attributes are things that modify the elements, right? So we want to put in magic into the element itself and do something with it. So the first attribute that I'm going to introduce to you is the hidden attribute. Okay, so can, can you all of you see from the back? All clear? Good. So now we've got hidden. We've got this hidden attribute here. So equals, da -da. So there are different kind of attributes out there. This is one of the main global attributes that we have in all HTML elements. So what do you make? Of course, HTML, the hidden text is already self-explanatory, right? So we just going to put in a true or a false, right? We have a true, right? So let's see what happens when we put in a true and see what the browser renders, right? Oh, shucks, it disappeared. You really can't see the text anymore. So this is one of the, uh, one of the one of the attributes in HTML itself. Hmm? Okay. Everyone can catch up. All good. Give me my idea.
Fantastic. Can, can you see me or not? Yeah? Um, when refresh, I have nothing to do. Oh, have you hit the control save? Yeah. Okay, give, give me a moment. Don't can't zoom on. Just just look at me. Just face me. Can you? Right. Jenna always can. Eh, oh, hey, shit. Oh. It didn't pick up anything. Oh. Mm. Okay, so there's, there's some issue. Not, not your fault. Totally, it's not your fault. Okay. Uh, just need to deactivate. Okay. Uh, if, it, if this thing happens again, right, just let me know. Thank you. 
experiment with more attributes, right? Let's play with more attributes and see what happens when we do that. Okay, so let's do a case two, which is heading two, right? So uh, we're gonna say, uh, what we're gonna say? Any, anyone wants? Hmm, what about you, gentlemen over there? What do you suggest we put? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Aaron. 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 Right. Okay. So we've got Aaron down here who has volunteer voluntarily surrendered his name to me and put up his name for sale. Right. So we've got H2. Let's see. Let's let's save the file. Remember, Control S, save the file, refresh the page, and we've got Aaron's name here. So let's do something more. Right. Uh, let's see. Let's let's see. Okay. So let's make a list of what Aaron does. Right. Okay. So uh, let's create a paragraph and a unordered list. So we've got. Let's introduce a new friend here called UL. Unordered list. So what is it? Is that a list? Some stuff in an unordered manner, right? So let's let's uh, and within the list itself, there are list items, right? So list items, what are what are the initials of list items? L I, fantastic. Okay, so Aaron, what are your hobbies, Aaron? Uh, reading. Actually. Reading. Okay. What about breathing? Do you breathe? Yeah. Breathing as well. Okay, so Aaron has two main hobbies, which is reading and breathing. Uh, let's see what happens. Ta da! Ta da! Aaron. <coughs> hobbies of Aaron. Reading, breathing. Alright, so we want to write load quotes that live and breathe on the website. Right, so we've, we've got so far, we've got unordered list, list items, paragraph, heading 2, right? So, you might be thinking, hey, there's so many headings, right? H1, H2. How many headings are there in total? Wow. Close, close enough. Okay, but uh, it's six, a total of six headings we have. Okay, so uh, we've got H1 to H6, and as it goes lower, it becomes smaller. You can see here, H2, it's not as big as H1, right? So now we've got a very fantastic looking site. Uh, is it really fantastic looking? Maybe not quite yet. But before we jump into even making the shop itself, let's experiment some more with attributes, right? Let's play with some attributes. So I'm going to introduce to you a friend called ID. So uh, what the, everyone of us here probably have an IC, NRIC, uh, whatever, but that's an ID, right? So it uni uniquely identifies each and every one of us so that we can be tracked down and arrested for what we do. So uh, let's create an ID for Aaron. So uh, let's create maybe Aaron123, right? So Aaron's ID is Aaron123, right? And when we refresh the page, what happens, right? Nothing happens. You don't see anything appear, right? But Something did happen. What happened? Let's do some fun stuff here. Okay, so uh, so nowadays teenagers uh, and young adults and all of us here likes to use Twitter, right? So every one of us here are probably using Twitter or Instagram or whatever it is, or maybe on Facebook, right? Uh, I'm not sure if it died out already, but yeah. So we use Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we like to use this thing called hashtag, right? Hashtag uh, no filter, hashtag John, uh, I don't know what. But we can play hashtags on HTML as well. Right, let's see how we can do that. Let's type in hashtag Aaron's ID. What's Aaron's ID? Aaron123. So let's press hashtag Aaron123 and see what happens. Did you see all that? Did anyone caught, saw that? Was it too fast? Okay, so let me open up a page, a normal page like this. 
and you immediately see John Cena fan, right? You see this word down here, right? And now, let's open with Control C and open up a new page with the hashtag down there. What happens? We jump immediately down to where Aaron is, right? You see it? See, that's, that, that's, that's the difference we are making here. We are making, we are assigning an ID to the element itself, and every ID must be unique. Okay, so don't don't go and put another same ID here. Right? Don't don't do this. Right? Uh, if you do that, uh, I'll put you in jail. Right? So uh, it will violate the HTML standard, and it won't it won't work as intended. Right? It still works. Your HTML page will still render as normal. Right? It will still bring you down to the bottom. But it only bring you down to the first element of which has the hashtag. Of which has the ID, sorry. Right? So everyone clear with this ID magic thing we are doing with the hashtag blah blah blah? All clear? Magic, right? So as you can see, we can do so much magic with just plain ugly black and white text. Just imagine the possibilities we can do with more than just that, right? We we want to do more than just that, right? So let's let's see what's the next thing that I'm gonna go through. So let's officially begin setting up our own e-commerce store. Yay! Okay, so let's delete the content here, right? We've done experimenting with HTML and everything. So let's create our website. So um, my commerce. Okay, let's, let's just call our brand as my commerce or something. Or whatever you want to name it, right? It doesn't really matter, but uh, you can put in whatever you want. And let's put in our, our, our store name as well, my commerce as a H1. And put in some text here. Uh, I think I have some. Okay, so H2. Uh, Welcome to my commerce. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, and one 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 eleven. Right. Okay. So we need to exert our our ability to create a website. So we must put in as, as many exclamation marks as possible. Right. So now that we aggressively put in large amount of exclamation mark, let's put in some content. Right. Uh, we sell various items at this store. Fantastic. Let's see what happens. All, all of you here? Good. You set up your own store yet? Let's see what happens now. Right. Ta -da. Wow! We've got our store set up ready. My commerce. Welcome to my commerce. We sell various items at this store. Right. Simple, right? We just deleted whatever we just did just now, and then we did something else instead. So uh, we want to I want to emphasize this point of experimenting. So when it comes to learning stuff, you know, you always gotta have fun, right? And experiment and try out new things. And as we go along, we'll try out new things as well while we progress our e-commerce store, right? So all of you here at your e-commerce store already? Great. Silence means consent, right? As usual. So, well, we've got a black and white text here. Can we do more than that, right? We shall, we must, we can, right? Let's do it then. We're gonna introduce to you the next, I'm gonna introduce to you the next topic, which is cascading style sheet, which is for short, CSS. So HTML and CSS, they go hand in hand to make itself look more beautiful, right? Let's beautify this and let's add in some styles to make it look probably nicer, <coughs> speak softer, yeah. go slower. Okay, uh, so as I was saying just now, we were, okay, so as I was saying just now, we are gonna go to <coughs> CSS, cascading style sheet. So HTML and CSS, both of which go hand in hand, and it makes beautiful websites like Facebook.com, uh, MySpace, uh, Flickr, or whatever sites that you know you visit. So you look at those sites, and then you look at this site. 
which one do you think is better? Right, Facebook and this, which one is better? Right, I would say that this has huge potential to be better than Facebook. Do you agree? Agree, agree, great. I agree, I like your optimism. Right, so let's, let's make this better than Facebook, right? Let's create a Facebook version 10.6 or something, right? So now, let's start doing it. Let's, okay, so in Style Sheets itself, we've got essential, uh, we can, what it means is that we can style all the elements that we have here. So H1, H2, P, body, and yeah, everything within the body itself, you can style it, right? So, you can style whatever thing you want here, right? And we'll never go out of style, huh? Okay, so let's start writing some code already. Not talking, let's get down the code, let's get doing it. So, so we'll never, we'll start with the word style here. So, pretty obvious style. And then, followed by type equals, another, this is another attribute here you want to take note of, text slash CSS. Then, close it up. Everyone got this? Style. Remember to put it inside a head, right? Put it inside a head, 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 your head. Put it inside your head, and let's move on. Remember to control, uh, save your file and control S, right? Yeah. Oh, it's pretty hot. Okay, so we've got, we want to style H1, right? Heading 1. So what do you do? Right, the most obvious thing, you type in H1. Right, that's the first thing you do, right? Naming anything. So, Syntax for CSS is different from HTML. So instead of using angular brackets, we're going to use curly brackets. So what are curly brackets? How do they look like? They look like this. They look like curly braces, right? So everyone got the, everyone can find the curly braces? Everyone found it? So whatever you type inside here will affect H1, which is heading one. Everything you type here, will affect heading one. Okay, so let's start affecting it, right? Let's start changing things within H1 itself. So what do we want to try it first, right? Maybe uh, text alignment? Shall we try text alignment? All right, so let's try with text alignment. Let's see what happens when we do that, right? Text align equals center. So uh, the syntax itself is pretty simple and self-explanatory. We've got this thing here, followed by whatever value you want to give it. You have the key, you have the key here which is text align, and a value here which is center. And it's separated using this colon here. Can you see this colon here? It's a colon, okay? And ends off with a semicolon, right? <coughs> Simple, got it? Key value, key value, key value, key value. All right, so this is the key, this is the value. Right, so we are, what we are essentially telling the CSS to do, what we are telling the browser to do, is that for everything that is, for any, every H1 element, for all H1 element, align it to the center. Okay, so let's save our file, and let's refresh. Let's see what happens. Now it's centered. Everyone got this? Great, fantastic. So now that we've got so far, should we stop here? No, we're not gonna stop here, right? Let's go further. Let's do more, right? Let's try changing the font size, right? This doesn't look big enough for me. It certainly isn't big enough, okay? So let's make it bigger. So what we wanna do is, uh, this, these are words and characters, right? So uh, if you have ever used a word editor before, you have known what is fonts, right? So we know what are fonts, we can adjust the size. So we've got font size. Font size, we can change the size. Let's give it a value of 56 PS. So let's go through the code again. Okay, so you've got a key, you've got a value. 56 PX, PX represent pixels, right? So uh, you can, you have now successfully adjusted the font size of it. So there are many, 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 many types of key values within CSS itself. And you can 
there's plenty of list that uh, uh, you can do it. So let's, uh, we're going to look up the Mozilla documentation. So always try to stick to Mozilla uh, because reasons. So within Mozilla Developer Network itself, there's this huge documentation on all the CSS references. So it, it didn't just say huge, it says exhaust, exhaustive reference, right? It's bigger than huge, right? So let's look, that's different. So in the Mozilla MDN, uh, Mozilla Developer Network, you can have a huge uh, place of all the keywords, so many, so many things, right? So many CSS, blinding me, right? Uh, let's make it even bigger, right? Right, so as you can see, we've got so huge of a collection of CSS styling and all, so many things that we can do with, so many things we can play with, and that's how our first step to making Facebook, right? An e commerce store, right? So, uh, as you can always refer back to this documentation for an exhaustive list of CSS, right? So, just keep in mind Mozilla Developer Network, right? They have a very good documentation, which I really like a lot. Um, and of course, I highly recommend their documentation over any other documentation, right? All right so there's animation. So in itself, you can see they give like syntax, how to use it, uh, formatting, how to do that, and all, all sorts of things, right? It gives you very good examples, which will be very, very beneficial to all of you here. Okay, so uh, now that you have known that resources such as Mozilla Developer Network exist, and then you can look up on the exhaustive list of CSS stuff, let's continue on, right? So let's make all of our text here become centered, right? We want to make it centered because having one in the center looks odd, right? Let's make everything in the center, right? So H2, text align center, right? Uh, so we've got paragraph two, right? Text align center. Right, so let's refresh our page and see what happens things. Ta-da, everything is central. Happens just like magic, right? Uh, but that's really just CSS. Hmm. So now, we want to make more things happen. Let's try to adjust the background, right? We want white background is too plain. Let's make it more colorful. Okay, so now we've adjusted H1, H2, P. Let's adjust the body itself and see what happens. All right. So we can do various kind of things to the body itself. So uh, one of the another key CSS value that you want to take note of is the body, uh, the background, the background color and the font color. All right. So, uh, font color isn't font color like that. It's, it's not like that. So, it's gonna be like this, just like this, right? So we're gonna put white, right? Simple, really simple, right? So let's see what happens when I type in body color white. You can't see anything anymore because the background is white and the word is white. So, let's make further adjustments to it. Let's make the background color change. So background slash color black. Cool looking site right now. We've almost reached a perfect looking website, right? So we've got body inside the body. We've got this key value called background dash color. So you can see that it's always when there's a supposedly a space is replaced with a dash, right? There's a dash here, all right? See, in text line, there's a dash as well, all right? Dash, dash, okay? And everything, remember, and with a semicolon, separated with a colon itself between the key and the value. Okay, all good. Looking at this fantastic website, let's make it even better, okay? So now that we've come so far, right? Uh, let's see what's the next step we're gonna do, right? So, um, 
Let's let's you know we've got a chunk of text here, right? We've got a big chunk of text here. Body H1 T H2. This is a big chunk of text that's you know quite annoying, isn't it? Let's separate it in another file, right? We can do that. And CSS allows us to do that really easily and really quickly. Right now, just right click this uh, connection here and create a new folder called assets. All good. And then right click the assets folder and put CSS. So inside assets, we've got the folder CSS, right? And inside CSS is empty. And that should be what you're going to see. And then right click CSS and create a new file called style.css within the CSS folder. Everyone clear? So again, create a new folder, assets. Within assets, right click, create a new folder call it CSS, right click CSS, new file, style.css. So what we're going to do is to separate uh, the CSS rules and the and the actual CSS itself, right? Let's try to do that, right? And see what happens, okay? So now, I want you to copy this chunk of text, excluding the style, excluding everything, that, excluding the HTML elements, okay? So when you control X, you're gonna have a, you're gonna leave behind an empty thing here. And then, place it all of it here, control V here. And you should get this, chunk of text here that, uh, that is really annoying because of the indentations are so annoying. Okay, so let's just try to tidy up this chunk of uh, CSS rules that we are placing just now. Right, looking good. Okay, so it's just moving the file, uh, moving the text, the CSS rules into another separate file and making life much neater. So now that we've put everything here in the CSS file, have, have all of you put all your CSS rules in the CSS files yet? Okay, so, so let me just repeat what I've done, okay? So create a new folder, assets, inside assets, create another new folder, CSS. Okay, let me just delete everything and then do it. Okay? <coughs> so right click here again. Create a new folder. Assets. All good. Have you all done this? It doesn't look very happy. Serious on this? Okay, I'll slow down, I'll slow down some more. Okay, so uh, have you all created this folder named Assets? All done? Created a folder Assets? Okay, so next, click on the next thing, this assets folder, right click, new folder, CSS. All good. Okay, so now, now, in a CSS folder, create a file named style.css. And you should see a blank file, and it's absolutely correct to have a blank file named style.css. 
Okay? Got a blank file, style.css. Okay, so initially we had all our styles here. We've got the style type equals text.css. Okay? Copy everything here. So I'm going to drag from the top down. From here, starting from the body, we want to copy everything until here. Okay? Don't copy the HTML element in. Don't copy that in. Got it? Got it? Have you all reached this step yet? All clear? Then, copy this text, control C, control C this text, and then backspace it. After you have control C and then you backspace it. Now, go to this new style.css file, control V to paste whatever content that we initially had already. All good? So now we've got a blank set of CSS rules in our HTML page. And for our CSS file, we've got all the CSS rules that we already have. All right here? Good. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to save this file, index.html. Right. After we have saved this file, let's see what happens to our e-commerce store. What will happen? Right. It will become normal again, like initially what we had. What happened? Why did this happen? Right. Why are you asking? So let's try to fix this. Right. Let's, let's fix this thing that we already had done. And then uh, delete this part. You just delete the entire element and create a new element called link. Okay. Angular, open angular bracket link. An attribute called rel equals style shit. Right. So far so good. Got a new element here, right? And we want to type in href equals assets forward, um, forward slash CSS forward slash style dot CSS and then close it. It's also like the meta attribute here which does not need another attribute to close it. Okay, so it's just a, it can close itself, essentially. So now we've got, okay, so you might be thinking, what does href, what does this rel even, even mean, right? What, what are all these words? Okay, so href essentially points towards where the style sheet lies. So we have created the other assets, CSS, style.css. So we want to point towards that, so we put in assets, slash, CSS slash style of CSS. So each slash rep uh, represent a new folder, a new directory, right? So in the assets folder, so you look into the assets folder first, right? We put the assets folder here, and then it looks to the next folder, CSS, which is here, and then finally to the file style dot CSS. All good. <laughs> Great. So now that we've reached this step of linking our HTML file to the CSS file, what do we have? Let's take a look at our website now. Wow! We've got exactly what we had initially, just much neater, right? Now we've got two separate files, index.html, style.css, right? So index.html style.css but whatever we have written in the style.css affects still affects the index.html because of the link that we place up in the head. So remember that meta title link is in the head. All this kind of stuff don't really appear in the body content itself. Right? Okay, so now we've got 
H1, H2, P. Then you might be asking, what about if I want to make a text be on the left and still want to use the paragraph element? What do I do? Hmm, interesting. Well, the problem has already been solved by our uh, by our past generation of engineers who have carefully thought out of really good RCs and uh, standards to help us solve all these problems. So how do we gonna solve it? Well, we we wanna do text on the left, right? Right. So when we when we put a text on the left and then we refresh the page, the text is not on the left. We wanna make it to the left. So let's try making it on the left, right? So we learn there's this thing called ID, right? So let's make use of this ID, right? So same thing, uh, we're gonna instead of Aaron, this time we're gonna we're just gonna put uh, the ID equals text left, right? Text dash left, right? We're just gonna do this, and then in the style sheet itself, do you remember what I uh, previously showed you all about the hashtag thing? So it applies the same to CSS itself. We use hashtag, hashtag text left. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna finish up this part first, and I'm gonna put up a file. For all of you to download first, for those who haven't kept, uh, who are apologies for going too fast. Okay, so I'm going to finish this part first. So we've got a hashtag, right? And then the ID thing, right? So in CSS, it goes the same. We can use the hashtag here and it will decorate whatever that was inside here, right? So we've got text left, ID equals text left. Nothing new here. So, what, what, what? Oh. Space to scroll. So let's do text align left. Simple, isn't it? That's really that was fast. Okay, let's refresh our page and see what happens. Ah, it appears on the left. Okay, so now I'm gonna upload the code online right now. Uh, uh code to bring up. Okay, so let's have a have a 10 minutes break. I'm gonna upload the code up online and yeah, you can have a break right now. Yeah, if you have any issues, just come down here to our booth and let us know. So, so. Oh, it's in a Google Doc format. Uh, copy and paste whatever is needed and then you, you get yeah, so just go to this tiny area and copy and paste whatever you need, okay? Alright. Should we start soon? You're recording already? Yeah. Uh, recording already? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll stop. No, 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 don't, don't stop when you. Okay, so. Okay, so did everyone manage to download the files and copy and paste whatever you needed yet? All good. Okay, we'll just wait a while more.
So we got text slash uh, dash right, right? Yeah, right. Okay, so we've got hashtag, we've got nothing in front, and what would it be for classes, right? So classes has a very special prefix that is for uh, these rules. So for classes, we use what we call a dot. So we type a dot as a prefix. And then we paste in text dash right. And the same thing again, curly braces, close curly braces, right? Dot text dash right. And then we're going to type in text align right. So instead of left, we're going to go right, right, right. <laughs> okay, so everyone got here so far? Remember for classes, for class is a prefix of a dot. For IDs, is a prefix of a hashtag. Okay. Uh, so now with vector index, you see that we've got class equals text dash right. And we've got ID text dash left. Okay. So if you want to do two, two paragraph of text with the text on right, this is correct, right? This would not have an issue because it's not an ID. It's a group. It's a group of rules that's applied to this class here, right? Text right, dot, text right. Colon braces, text align, dot, uh, colon right. And let's refresh our page and see what happens, right? Ta -da. We've got two texts on the right, and that's correct. Everyone on the same page? All good. Not two. Okay, so again, so let's go through again what we've just done, right? We've written a class. Okay, we've written a class that is that equals text equals a uh, text dash right. Okay, so we put down here in a paragraph space. Remember, all these are attributes, right? ID is an attribute, class is an attribute, and attribute value is this, right? This is the attribute value. Okay, so in the style dot uh, style dot CSS, we got uh, text dot text slash text dash right. But for since it's a class, it's different from IDs. Instead of hashtag, we use a prefix of a dot. So we put a dot text dash right with a braces open curly braces. Type in a rule that we want to put in text align colon right, then close curly braces. Ta da! Here, here, All right. Dot text right here in the class. Text dash right. Right. Okay. So class right is a collect. Uh, so let's say we put you in the same class. It's like a group. It's like a group of elements. Okay. It will be applied to every single element that belongs to this particular group. So right here, right with this paragraph, these two paragraphs here, they belong to the group called text right. Okay. So both of them are in this same class group, right? And the style.css, right, is essentially stating the rules for this group, for this text dash right rules, uh, text dash right group, sorry. Yeah, so in this group itself, every one of them who are in this group, everyone, every single element that has this, uh, that are within this text dash right uh, group, they'll have, they'll have to, Abide by this CSS rule, which is text align right. So they will have to move towards the right. Right. Okay. Good. All good. All have this text on the right. Great. Okay, that's good. Thank you. 
<laughs> All good. Okay, let's move on from this step. Okay? Great. Now let's make it more complex, right? Because we are let's add more complexity because we can, right? So um we're gonna try to make it more uh a bit more complex to try to see what will happen if we add in additional elements, right? So right now we have a very basic body, H1, H2, H2, P, P, text left, blah, blah, blah. So let's make it more complex. Let's add in a, an element called header. Okay, so we've just added in an element called header within the HTML file. You can see here, open bracket header, this is an element, right? And we're going to put whatever we have put here from H1 all the way to P, and then we're going to copy the header. So what I just did was that I encapsulated H1, H2, and a paragraph into the header element, right? So all these H1, H2, and paragraph are in this. Uh, Element rating. You can see it? Hater, H1, H2, P, itself, close hater. So we've just added another layer and cap, uh, element encapsulated within another element. So an element within an element. So we've just added more complexity to what we've already had. Right? And with more complexity comes with more complexity. Yeah? So uh, we've got the same set of rules here, which will still work the fine, which will still work the same. Right? What did I just do? Okay. Uh, so let me just delete this chunk of text I have here. So now that we've got all our elements except the text left and text right in header, let's see what happens next. Right, it's still the same thing, same my commerce store. Welcome to my commerce, we sell various items at this store. Still the same thing, we're not getting anywhere further or closer. We just added more complexity because of the sake of it. Okay. Uh, well, we certainly can do more things if we want to, right? So, as you can see, we've got this text line here, right? And it's being repeated. Text align again. And text align again. Right? But before we try to cut down the number of quotes we have, let's try to do something else instead. Let's try to put in header, right? Let's try to put in the context of header within the CSS file. Okay? So let's try that out and see what happens. So we want to add in uh, only to adjust the font size of the H1 within the header itself. So let's create a, another one that will be a smaller H1, okay? Let's just create, create this, this text here. And then and change this style here, change this style here, and add a space in front and a header. Just like that. Header, space, H1. And then we save the file. Header space H1. Save the file. And let's see what we have. Refresh the page. Smaller H1. What happens? Okay, so what we just did was we, we make it more specific. We increase We've made the text more implicit and more as specific. We've added the H header in front of the H1. So this rule, this rule here, text align center font size 56 px would only apply to L the H1 elements within header. So this H1 element isn't in inside the, the header, right? This H1 element isn't inside the header. Do you see? Is the code clear for all of you here? 
Okay, so you've got header here. You've got one H1 here. You've got one heading one. Heading one again. So we've got two heading one here, right? Can you see? We've got two H1. And one is inside the header. The other isn't inside the header, right? And what we did was that we only, in the CSS rule, right, we added this header space H1. So they only look, it first looks up header, right? They look into header, and we've got header here, and then it looks into H1, and we've got H1 here. So that particular rule here, which is align center, font size 56, is only applied to this one, to this word here, my commas, and not the other H1. amazing layer of additional complexity to make our code more or less readable. Right, so uh, is the, the, uh, everyone understood the, the additional unquestionably unnecessary complexity? Uh, no? Not really? Uh, okay, I'll explain it again. So, we've got, okay, let me try another way of explaining things, right? Okay, so in the body text itself, we've got H1. Okay, it's inside of H1, right, it's called smaller H1. Okay, it's gonna be smaller, of course. And inside the header itself, right, we've got this element header. And inside of this element header, right, we've got H1. Okay? All good so far? All understood what we have here? We've got two H1 elements. Did they, did they have a spell? They have a spell word there. So it's incorrect. Not supposed to have HTML elements in the CSS. Okay, so it's just a style of CSS, but is that a style tag? Everything is like that, right? Check your case sensitivity. Yeah. Yeah. So, we've got two H1 elements here. You can see H1 and another H1. One is with the content of smaller H1. The other is my commas. The H1 is inside the header element. Okay? So this H1 we have here is inside this header element. Understood? All clear on this? My commas H1 is inside header. And then H1 here that is called smaller H1 is not inside header, it's outside of the header. Okay? Okay, so we got two very different H1s, although they are H1s. Okay? Then inside style, we have only applied these two rules here. These two CSS rules are specially only just for this special H1 inside the header. So it only applies to H1s that are within this header itself. Okay? Because we prefix the H1 with a header. Header space H1. And the rules are inside. All good. Great. So let's go back to our uh, page website here. Okay, so still the same thing with the smaller H1 without the rules being applied. So the, the smaller H1 is smaller and it's also not aligned to the center. Okay? All understand what is happening?
Okay, so let's delete this smaller h1 code first and continue on with what we're gonna do. Right, let's make every single header, let's prefix uh, our headers, our uh, paragraphs with header in front. H2 and D will also be prefixed with header space. Save it, it will still look the same. Okay? It's exactly the same thing, just that with specific with add more details into what we're gonna what we have been well we are doing, right? And now let's try to uh, shorten our code. Right. We've repeated this text align multiple times. There must be an easier way to do things, right? Yes, there is. And we're gonna do it right now, here. So uh, I'm gonna copy this header P, copy it, and I'm gonna put a comma here. I put a comma here, space, and I put header P here again. And I can simply delete this. Good. All good. Now, I'm going to copy this header H1 and put it on top here with a, with a comma as well and a space. Uh, you don't need a space, but I just put it there because I can. And then I can remove this text line again. Ta da! We've shortened our code by putting them in a group, right? Okay. All good.
let's let's continue from here. So now that we cut short our code and put everything header H1, header H2, header paragraph, text align center, we made a lot of progress in cutting down the repetition that we previously had. Right. But it's not good enough. Right. We need to do more than that, than just that. Right. Okay. So let's do something more interesting. Okay. So you can see that we've got text here, we've got text on our left. But they're on different paragraphs, right? They're not on the same paragraph. Okay? Then what about images? We're not showing images, right? How are we gonna handle all these images? How are we gonna handle cute cat pictures or whatsoever, right? So um, not to worry. Let's go to Let's go and search for some cat images first, right? We're gonna put in some images to make the e-commerce store looks better. So, uh, I like this specific breed of cats, uh, short hair exotics. Okay, these are particularly cute breed of cats that I like, I guess. So, uh, which cat are we gonna sell, right? Um, the white one. Which one? This one? Below, below. This? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just... Okay, so... What is this? Found it. Okay, that doesn't really work. Let's just take this, right? And then we just save the image as uh, make everything into low cat case, okay? Uh, good practice. So exotic short hair dot jpeg. We'll save this file, okay? Uh, so now we want to upload it to our server. How do we do that? So. Uh, this image file is a resource, it's an, as an asset as well. So let's create another folder within the assets folder and call it IMG. So now within the assets folder, we've got two folders, CSS and images, which is, uh, which is a shorthand using IMG, right? So let's now try to upload our file. Everyone all at the folders part. All of you have two folders, CSS and CSS and IMG within the SS folder. Good. Have, have you all found an image that you all want to use? Yeah? Good. So uh, if you're not using cat pictures, uh you can the door is just <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna upload it. It's very simple. You drag this thing, and then you drag this thing. Okay, that's not the right way. So let's right click the image folder here, right click, and then press upload. Okay, so that's the right way of doing it, okay? Uh, we've got an image here. A cute, white, exotic, short hair cat. Uh, just an interesting fact for you guys, for all of you to know, white cats are usually, more, most of the white cats, they, they have problems with their vision. So most of, uh, as blind cats, if you look around, blind cats are usually white. It's an inherited, inherited problem with a breed of cats that are white in color, right? So as long as their furs are white, the chances of them being blind or partially bright, blind is very high. <laughs> so yeah, it's a very cute short hair. Have all of you uploaded it to the image folder here? Uh, remember to change spaces to dash and uppercase to lowercase, okay? Just to avoid any kind of conflicts in terms of file naming or whatsoever. Uppercase to lowercase, spaces change to dash. So you can see here, 
exotic dash short hair dot jpeg. No space there. Totally no space. Okay. All good. So this means that you don't need to close it at all. Cool. So we are transversing down the folder directories and all. So we start from assets, which is what we have here. <laughs> then into the data directory image img, and then to the file itself exotic short hair, which is here. And then we save the file. We open it up and see what happens next. We've got a cat that is very cute and it's staring right into your soul asking you why don't you have a cat? Feed me, human. Okay? All got this. Okay, let me just show you the code again. Image source equals assets image exotic dash shorthand dot jpeg. All good. <laughs> okay, okay, no.
All good. Have all of you got the got your images inside your uh, your website? It's a block. Yeah, that's what it is. 
right? So it's not a paragraph, it's not anything, it's a block as well. Which is what paragraph is as well. Is. Paragraph is a block as well, right? So think it's something like paragraph, but it's not a paragraph, right? So what do I even mean by this? Right, let's type in some code inside this div element itself, right? And see what happens. So let's say uh, this is some text in the division. Quite a okay, let's save this file and see what our store has in store for us. Right? All good. Deep below the image, right below the image, right? All good. Below the image divider, this is some text in the divider. Close divider. Okay, so now let's just refresh this page and see what happens. Right? Just like that. Like a divider, but not a divider. And no, like a paragraph, but not a paragraph. Okay? Cool? Looks cool, doesn't it? So, uh, so people might think, oh, this is so unnecessary. unnecessary. Why don't we just use paragraphs all the way, right? Well, paragraphs and dividers are different, right? So, paragraph is for words. Well, dividers you can put in words as well, but paragraphs is mainly for your para long paragraphs of text, right? You only just want to use it for every single paragraph. Whereas, dividers, you can do it to do blocks and magic and many more things that we want to do to make our store look more beautiful. Right. We want to make our store look more beautiful and we have to use in a, we could use paragraphs, but that's not the right way to do it. We want to do it the right way using dividers. Okay? So it's a block here. We've got one block here, block of stuff here. And let's let's have some description text here. Can we put some description text here? Text align using text align? No, that doesn't work. Uh, text align won't be good enough to put all my words here. I want it here, right beside the cat, to make it look beautiful. So I'm gonna show you what happens, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna quickly type through the code and show you what happens and how we can achieve that, right? Okay. So I'm just gonna, uh, don't need to follow through yet. I'm just gonna type through the code very quickly. So. Uh,
written all these HTML dividers, dividers within dividers within dividers, within, with an image inside all these dividers, and the text inside all these dividers. Let's move on to actually writing the rules and the classes for all these HTML that we've written so far, right? Let's progress forward because we are a progressive country, right? So, uh, two questions? Okay, so I've written some very very broken code here, which is on which is very very broken as you can see. Uh, we've got the block manager class with the curly braces with equals hundred percent. What with uh, with equals hundred percent means that it'll take the hundred percent width of your browser, right? So uh, the block manager would essentially be be the size of whatever size your browser would be, right? So remember to prefix the block manager with a dot there because it's a class. So class, uh, right? Remember that classes are prefixed with the dot there. Dot dot block dash manager space open curly bracket with colon hundred percent close semicolon uh, semicolon close curly bracket. Okay, so now we've written a block manager with a width of 100%. Let's go on to manage our blocks, right? So we've got two blocks, one on the left, one on the right, right? But both just have to share the same characteristic, characteristics as each other, right? So we've got float left with 50% margin zero, padding zero. Okay, so I'm going to explain what uh, this float left means. Okay, so this float left means means that the elements will go to the left, and that's it. That's really it. The elements will be in line to what the size is. So the size is fifty percent, right? So we could fit two of these blocks of fifty percent. So because fifty plus fifty equals hundred, right? So when we take two blocks together, we've got two separate blocks that will float to the, which will both push towards the left and they will be right beside each other. So this is what happens when they get pushed towards the left, right? So you've got two blocks, the cat here and the text here. The cat here, which is an image, is on the 50, it occupies the 50% and the other 50% is occupied by the descriptive Exotic short hair word there, right? So with fifty percent margin zero padding zero, uh, this is to the margin and padding zero is to remove the alignment properties that are already set as by the browser itself. Just um, the main important thing you want to look at is the load and the width, right? So to align these two elements just like that, it took us four lines, three deep blocks, and many, 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 many stuff, right? So let, uh, let's, I'll leave this code right here so you can uh, copy it. How's that end product supposed to this? Okay, uh, not the, as in the end of the workshop. Not like this, but it looks something better. Okay. Okay.
So uh, let's, let me just give you a heads up on what it's supposed to look like at the end of it. Right, so uh, at the end of uh, today's workshop, you probably should get something like that. Okay? We have a navigation bar on top, nicely aligned, uh, better fonts, better looking fonts, cat on the left. Okay? So you look roughly like that, but we are almost there, right? We are almost there. Except we've got ugly fonts, we've got ugly fonts, we've got ugly colors. Right? Really ugly. Right? Uh, All good. Everybody good. Good. Excellent. Thumbs up. Great. Okay, so uh, does everyone has this thing like this? No. No? Okay. The HTML? Okay, this is the HTML code. Below the header, class equals block manager.
uh, 1960s, 30s forms that are so ugly that it cannot be described with any English words, right? Because my vocabulary is bad and I can't describe. All right, so let's make our fonts look better, right? We don't want to use the or the original fonts that are just so plain and and it's black and white. It's still black and white. It's not colorful. It's nothing has changed, right? It's still black and white, just that we inverted it. And it's still kind of, you know, not good enough. So let's look up on color plaid flakes, right? So uh, we've got this color scheme called Material Design by Google. So Google has kindly designed out with a new uh, design scheme itself called Material. And it's in Android phones that it's been uh, and from Android 5 onwards, you, uh, Android 5 onwards, you've got material design loaded into your phone, and we want to achieve that, right? So let's go look up on this thing called material color, right? So on the first result, we've got color style material design guidelines, right? So under this material guidelines itself, we've got list of colors here, uh, uh, stating all the colors. These are what we call hex codes, right? We can put these hex codes within our color itself. So let's just try one random one and see what happens next. Right, let's just pick this purple one. Go to style of CSS. Go up all the way. At the body here, we've got color white, right? Remove the white, change it with hashtag whatever, 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 whatever hex code. Right, so this is the color hex code used in uh, colors, basically, to describe how colors looks like. So now, when I save it, everyone got to, uh, okay, so this is the URL here, material.google.com slash style slash color.html, and you'll find the color patterns, right? Okay, everyone got the color page ready? So just pick one random hex code number, hex, blah, 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 blah. And then put it into your body, body color. Control S, save. So when I go back to the page itself, I'm gonna have purple tags. Simple, isn't it? up the session for today. 
Uh, not to worry, everything is, the video is recorded and it will be posted up online. Uh, the code, I'll be posting up the code as well, so not to worry. We'll be able to catch up later on. Next week, for next week, we'll be going through cascading style sheets, advanced cascading style sheets, with the ability to be responsive. Responsive style sheets that respond to changes of the code of the user's browser size. So for example, if you have a phone, how would your site look like for the phone? It would differ because you need to design it for different kind of user experiences. Mobile needs to have its own design, web, and for websites, it needs to have its own design. So we have media queries and all that to make it more responsive. More responsive. And other than that, for the next week, we'll be going through uh, PHP development on a uh, basic level. So as of, uh, don't forget, <coughs> don't, don't forget we'll be posting out the code and everything. So not to worry, if you have any questions, feel free to stay behind and ask, and, uh, ask us, right? What's PHP? PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. What's that about? It's a, it's a server-sided programming language to help render things on the server and present it to the to the to uh, everyone using a browser. Right, so uh, okay, so huh? okay, so uh, we have some quiz again to test your memory, right? Have you been listening? Have you been trying? Have you been dying in this place, right? So we'll be able to find that all out just by asking you a few questions, right? So uh, let me think of a question to ask, right? Oh. Okay, I'll ask a very simple question. What's his name? We run. We run. Okay, so what's his name? Yeah, we run. Okay, who who raised his hand first? Okay. Yes. We run. We run. We run. Okay. Uh, next question. Wow, this kind of question. They're serious, ah. What is CSS? Cascading style sheet. Hey, hey, ten. One. Two. Uh, don't raise hand here. Yeah. Wait for him. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, that's good. <laughs> if you can see, I think you, you say the board already. Eh? <laughs> okay, again, again, again. Wow. One, two. My voice questions already. What is CSS? One, two, three. Okay, I saw the hand behind first. Yes, so I see yes, yes. Uh, those, those that answer correct, you can come down to get something. So what is HTML? One, two. Hey, uh, I got a better question. Okay, okay don't, these are very basic questions because we got stuff to give out, so we want to give them. <laughs> and we know that it's a tiring thing if you ask to take the thing, it might not. It is quite unfair for some that don't have basic lah. So this this is the basics for me first before he asks the more technical one. So why is HTML? One, two, four. <laughs> one, two, three. Okay. Okay, let me ask one, one harder one. Uh, so this is a harder question or not? I think only people who have been not sleeping will well, know, know the answer. Okay, so uh, what type of language is what type of language is HTML? Okay, so for your control spider, uh, one, two, three. Okay, I, I saw that at first. The the red shirt, yeah, yeah. So what what is uh what what language is uh what type of language is uh is HTML? Um more specifically more specifically, you are very close. 